If you've been following us for a while, you might remember that back in 2023 November, we went to Arita, Japan to do something called a ceramics buffet. If you haven't been following us for a while, we went to Koraku Kiln in Arita and did something called a ceramics buffet, which is an experience where you can pick up a shopping basket and fill it all the way up to the brim for a set price of all of the ceramics you can fit inside. There are two sections, the 5,000 yen section and the 10,000 yen section. The 5,000 yen section is basically just blue and white ceramics. This expensive 10,000 yen section that I'm standing in is colorful as well as blue and white. They're the more expensive products that you can buy. If you choose a 10,000 yen course, both sides are open for you to choose. And we're allowed to take a look first before we choose um, and after we choose in the basket, which has to be flat. Um, then we go back to the reception and then pay. And these, are all the things that we picked. And the YouTube shorts were released had a lot of positive comments and you guys were so excited to do something like that for yourselves. But there were a few that really did concern us and those were the ones that were asking about the safety and the lead that was inside. We live in New Zealand and lead awareness is something that no New Zealanders have really been made aware of. It's something that we believe has been really drilled into Americans but actually hasn't gone into the New Zealand mindset. And since we learned that, we thought we should really get these tested. And for 18 full months, we haven't been using any of these in fear of uh, the amount of lead. So we were really lucky to find Ananda who runs the channel Lead Aware NZ. And Ananda is based in Gisborne. And we thought we would bring these to her ourselves and also enjoy a little experience in the Hawke's Bay of New Zealand. My name is Ananda Card and I run Lead Aware New Zealand, which is on uh, Instagram, Facebook and TikTok. I started Lead Aware New Zealand as a Facebook page to raise awareness about lead poisoning issues and where there is lead in our common environment in New Zealand. I found out that my house was full of lead and my baby was exposed and we learned so much about how to improve our house and make it safe for the kids that I wanted to share that information and get it out there because nobody else in New Zealand was doing that. This is called a portable or handheld XRF which stands for x-ray fluorescence. What it does is through this window right here it shoots x-rays down into whatever you're testing and based on the response it gets back it can tell you the elemental makeup of it. What I do for most testing is just a quick 30 second screen. The longer you do the testing the more accurate the results are. The 30 seconds is generally good for what we're doing. For. And then as you're reading it will show you um, in real time what the elements are that it's detecting and then at the end it gives you a summary of that um, 30 second test. What it's routinely used for is by contaminated land consultants when they're testing soil, but it's also used in mining. I'm not sure how much that's done in New Zealand, but in other countries it is. Okay, should we start with these ones? These are the most colorful ones. Okay. I haven't done much testing on Japanese products myself. Often the products in Japan that are made for domestic use are safe, but the products that they export are often not necessarily safe. So really could go either way. What I see is the different colors of the glazes make a big difference with the lead. And the yellows, browns, blacks are often the highest lead, uh, sometimes white as well. And then the colors that have more cadmium is reds, oranges, and yellows. Blue things tend to be pretty safe. If I saw something that was blue, I wouldn't expect it to be necessarily high. So the lead is 1570. No cadmium. No, less than 29. I personally would not eat food on something that high. Uh, not in my house on a regular basis. I wouldn't freak out if someone served it to me, you know, for one time. But put to put chopstick on, I probably wouldn't be as concerned about that. Lead affects every organ system of the body. It's most dangerous in children because of their developing brains. Lead exposure in a baby almost always has no symptoms, but then can show up when they're in school and they're having learning difficulties or behavioral problems or aggression and impulsivity. Those are the ways that lead normally shows up, but the delayed effects make it difficult to know if a child is being poisoned right now because at the time of the poisoning, there's usually not symptoms. I love ceramics that look like this. Less than 31. Oh, so yeah, that one's good. There is no 
good way to test for lead in your dishes at home because the paint swabs are not sensitive enough for food. The swabs are meant for paint, not for dishes, so they're not sensitive enough to tell you if it's safe. The lead paint swabs can only detect about five or 600 ppm lead. A food safe level is a thousand times lower than that. You could have a really high amount of lead in the ceramic, but if you test it with the swab, it might be completely negative if the glaze is intact, which is what happens with new product. But studies show that over time, the glaze degrades and the lead can start to come out of the surface of it. That would be too unsafe for food. The ones that were those traditional white and blue all seem to be completely safe. And the other ones, even the beautiful ones where the colors were in the glazes, like within the whole surface, also generally seemed pretty good. The ones that were riskiest seemed to be the kind of painted, very colored designs that were painted on the surface with different um, visual elements. So I think if you avoid those, you might be pretty good. Ceramics in general are a bit of a risky thing and you never know for sure if something's gonna be safe or not. It's at your own risk, really. 103,000, right there. But there. this in oh, this there. is all safe inside. <laughs> so just that part. So just don't put your food in the liquid. Just, just don't touch that part. It took a while, but we now have the results of every single one of these things. We may have to get rid of some of these, which is such a shame, but also I guess we could just use them as decorative pieces as well. Ananda gave us these little pieces of paper and we filled actually all of these out for every single one of these products. They tell us the levels of lead and these are the results. We found that the things with the blue, which is the traditional color of ceramics, tend to be safe. And things that are super colorful like this one, she had to test them one by one by one. Unfortunately, I think there are some colors on this which aren't safe. So this one is actually a no, which is such a shame because look how cute. For this one, it wasn't lead filled and she actually gave the thumbs up, which is great for us because we've been using this for ramen. And then you get bowls like this, which were fine on the inside, but these really, really heavily colorful bits had quite a lot of lead uh, detected. She says, again, to our own discretion, food can still go inside as long as we're just not Unfortunately, lead testing isn't widely available outside of commercial use. So we were actually really, really lucky to have Ananda be available for us and especially in such close proximity. So I'm really glad that we managed to get all of these tested in one go and we just have definitive answers of what we can use from these and what we can't use anymore. For those who want to do the ceramics buffet and are still tossing up about the safety concerns of the lead, we found that most of the ones that are actually Koraku Kiln products, such as this one, which you can see on the logo, were actually safe to use. Generally, the ones that are plain white and the ones that are blue are probably okay. So if you want to use all of these as eating plates and bowls, then avoid highly colorful ones, or at least the ones that are highly colorful on the inside where the food is in contact. But again, there are exceptions to every rule. We can't guarantee that all of the products that we found were safe will be safe on the next batch, as it is always constantly on rotation. Once the stock clears out, other ceramics will be sent to Koraku Kiln in order to be sold. Unfortunately, a few of these things will have to be relegated to just looking from afar and not with food presented on it. But that's okay, we can actually still use a good number of these and the rest we can just display. I'm still happy that we got all the products because we picked them ourselves and we spent a hell of a long time doing it. I think we're very attached to all of these. If you're in New Zealand, you can actually send your products, ceramics buffet or not, to Ananda for $20 each. You can test them all and let you know whether they're safe to use and hopefully it will be okay. We recommend you follow Ananda for lead aware information and follow us for our next trip, not only through Hawke's Bay, but also coming up in Are we afraid of purchasing secondhand ceramics and even new ceramic products in shops in the future? Yes, very much. Highly recommend everyone uh, learns that anxiety for themselves.